Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Gizo Pass, your YouTube premier channel about all things women's football. And off the heels of the latest international break, this week's top 5 is packed with some explosive encounters from the Blue Lions of West London getting gunned down at the Emirates to a royal humbling in Madrid. And without any further ado, we get started in North London, where Arsenal took on the current WSL champions in Chelsea. Having recovered from their haphazard start to the season, Arsenal welcomed title rivals Chelsea to the Emirates, with the hosts having their eyes on going level on points to the Blues when looking to stave off yet another big challenge in Arsenal. And both Jonas Ederval and Emma Hayes pulled out all those stops to give their respective charges the best chances of winning this tense encounter, especially given that both teams were in a rich reign of four with four wins apiece coming into this game. At the onset of the first whistle, the Gunners hit the ground running and overwhelmed Chelsea to get an early goal from none other than Beth Mead, but wouldn't get to celebrate the lead for too long as Connor Rudy would quickly level for the Blues, but the odds were nevertheless in Arsenal's favour as they kept on hacking away at the visitors, and eventually their efforts would pay dividends in the 36th minute thanks to a headed effort in off the corner by Amanda Ilestead, and in a quick 1-2 reminiscence of Cesc Fabregas in the 2009-10 season of the Premier League, Arsenal would score yet again but this time it would be Alessia Russo who would add her name to the score sheet to give Arsenal a solid two goal lead going into the second half. The Gunners would eventually run out 4-1 winners in what was a decisive victory for them as they did everything needed to effectively demolish Chelsea right from the start, especially considering that they carved out even more opportunities in the second half to further the scoreline. And it must be said that the crowd was an added factor in the energized effort of Arsenal who are now only behind Chelsea on goal difference of which it's just 3 goals. Now full credit must also be given to Chelsea who despite the resounding loss and controversial penalty that they conceded that Alessio Russo did eventually convert to give Arsenal the 4th goal of the game, they kept fighting till the very end and displayed the attitude of champions even at 3 goals down. And finally, and I think this is the most important fact to just include here, a massive congratulations goes to both teams for setting a new WSL tennis record of 59,042 people at the Emirates Stadium. This is an incredible achievement for the entire WSL and further shows increasing interest that women's football is attracting, at least in England. Another top encounter that took place this weekend came from the Frauen Bundesliga, where two of the most formidable sides this season, Eintracht Frankfurt and TSG Hoffenheim, locked horns in an attempt to shake each other off, as at the time of their game, they were both on level ground in terms of league points. Frankfurt were of course the team that took the initiative from the start as they are well known for doing in any case and set the marker for the intense direction the game would take but their early fire would be dampened somewhat in the third minute where a swift switch in play saw Hickelsberger put through on goal to open the scoring for the visitors in Hoffenheim. Both teams would have equal opportunities to add to the score sheet with Frankfurt in particular looking the deadlier of the two given that they were trailing and eventually the relentlessness would pay off after Freigang would grab onto a loose ball and nestle it into the top of the roof off the net to draw Frankfurt level towards the end of the first half with regular threat Agnomi eventually giving the host the lead for the first time in the game just minutes into the second half. And despite their best attempts to bring themselves on level footing, Hoffenheim would ultimately succumb to a 3 1 loss courtesy of an injury time goal by Martinez, which gave Frankfurt the three points, the three all important points that sees them definitively take third place behind Bayern Munich in first and Wolfsburg in second. In an undeniably spirited encounter, both teams gave their all in this match, and there really was not a lot to separate them from one another, which is exemplary of the high level that both Frankfurt and Hoffenheim are currently operating on and you can be guaranteed that Hoffenheim will return to winning ways come the next round of fixtures in the Frauen Bundesliga whilst for Frankfurt they now look ahead to their Champions League counter against Benfica this coming week. Leaving the German fatherland, we now take a trip down to the boot of Europe in the Serie A Feminine where some of the best of the rest in Sassuolo and Fiorentina went up against each other in a fun encounter that was headlined by a slew of worldly attempts in the first half and the second half also that if goal line technology existed in Italy there in the women's division, I'm sure that at least three of them would have counted. The fireworks of the first half would eventually come alight properly in the second half with a fiery effort from Catena would give the visitors the lead and provide an additional spark that was already a hot encounter and the world the attempts did not lit up either as mentioned before but unfortunately none of them would go in as eventually Fiorentina would run out 2-1 winners thanks to yet another goal from Catena and a consolation from Beccari. 
Given the resolve that both teams showed in this match, it was a bit unfortunate that Saitolo left with nothing to show for their efforts and what was an energetic encounter filled with enough drama and excitement that kept the crowd entertained from start to finish. But nevertheless, it was a well-worked win by Fiorentina, whose victory solidified their position in third and are now only 5 points behind second place Juventus. A penultimate top 5 match of this week takes us to Spain, where Real Madrid hosted Sevilla in an encounter where Madrid was seeking to regain some consistent form against one of the league's informed teams that are not named Barcelona. Madrid were very emphatic early doors as Sevilla were comfortable in just sitting back and absorbing the pressure from the opposition and looked to capitalize on their initially sparse opportunities with neither side ultimately going on to score in the first half. But luckily, the floodgates would open in the second half with San Pedro opening the scoring off a deflected shot and it seemed to be heading towards yet another routine win for Sevilla. But a loose ball in the 84th minute would be pounced upon by Muller who would draw a level for Los Blancos to set up the final 5 minutes of turmoil that would see Aparicio go through on goal and chip Mr. Rodriguez before Gemma Gili would top off the emphatic victory and continue Sevilla's winning form with Real Madrid now being left to pick up the pieces of what was an undeniably damning defeat that leaves them further adrift with their El Clasico rivals and in need of a string of better performances should they have any chance of rescuing this season which is threatening slowly unravel itself bit by bit and as for Sevilla they now continue their ascent up the Liga F table and who knows on this current level of form they could just end up being in the top 3 of the Liga F when the season eventually reaches its conclusion. And finally, we finish off this edition of Top 5 with a trip to France in the Division 1 Arkema, where Montpellier hosted Paris FC, who actually have not had much luck as of late on the continental stage in the Women's Champions League, but when it comes to domestic form, they have continued to keep up the pace with prospective runaway leaders, I of course am talking about Olympique Lyonnais. And true to this statement, Paris took little time in asserting themselves against the host as regular goal scorer and goal scoring culprit in general, Finney scored a classic goal to the scoring in the game, and you would soon be followed by Corboys as Paris FC set an early marker for the game before eventually putting it to rest at the end of the first half thanks to a third goal by Baudieu. Despite a concerted effort to attempt to rescue the game, especially through a consolation effort by Mont this year, Montpellier unfortunately succumbed to a hefty 4-1 loss to Paris FC in what ultimately was an exhibition game for the Parisians, who were overall the better side in this encounter and collected the 3 points to be within 5 points of catching up to league leaders Olympic Lyonnais. Of course, Paris FC have made headlines throughout this entire season, not only for their continental feats in beating the likes of Arsenal and Wolfsburg, at this rate I know I do sound like a broken record, but even looking at what they have done in their domestic league in France, they have been the best team in the entire division, not named Olympic Lyonnais. And the fact that when it comes to just a local rivalry, of course, they are paired up against Paris Saint-Germain is interesting and very exciting to see how far this team can go because they are historically one of the best teams in France. And to see them still manage to compete at such an elite level, especially when you consider their crosstown rivals in PSG and the loads of cash that they have to potentially just juice up their team. A lot of credit must go to the Paris FC board, players and different staffing personnel who are involved in this team and how far they've come and hopefully should Leon, highly unlikely, slip up in the title race this season or in the oncoming seasons, Paris FC can be there to claim this opportunity and hopefully give themselves a well-deserved piece of silverware for all the efforts. And those are the top 5 matches this week with the theme of them all being just about fun. Fun to watch, fun to analyze, and fun to observe as a neutral, as each of these games had loads of entertainment factors to them, especially the Frankfurt game and of course the London Derby between Arsenal and Chelsea. Now, what do you think of all these matches that happened this week? What were your top 5 matches of this week, if any? Are there any matches from these or other domestic leagues that you think should have been in the top 5 instead? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below and as always, please make sure to like, share, subscribe and I will see you in the next one.